my name is Melissa. Welcome to my channel. If you don't know, we bake here, and today we're gonna not be baking. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> but we're gonna be doing something cool, I promise. We're gonna be making waffles, which I love, and I've been craving waffles, and I have a bunch of plums, so I thought, why not make some plum compote, make some waffles, have a delicious lunch, and share it with you guys. So, that's what we're gonna do. Let's get started. So we can't have waffles without some plum compote. So we're gonna go ahead and start with 15 plums or 175 grams, three tablespoons of sugar, granulated sugar, and 170 grams or three fourths cup of water. And that's it, so let's get started. And to get started, we're gonna go on and go ahead and grab our plums. And before we even slice these open and do anything, we're gonna to wanna to wash them. We always wanna wash our fresh produce before we use it. So now that they're all washed and pretty and clean, we can go ahead and grab our cutting board and also our knife. And we're also gonna grab a small saucepan with a lid. Now we can go ahead and start on these plums. So we're gonna go ahead and slice them directly in half and pop the stem out as well because we don't need that. And just go all the way around in half, twist it open. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and pop the seed out. Man, this, this plum's giving me a hard time. Okay, perfect. And we can go ahead and toss our plums into our saucepan and then we're gonna go ahead and just do all this with all of our plums. Toss them all in the saucepan and discard the seeds and stems. And now that all of my plums have been chopped, I'm gonna go ahead and add my sugar and water and I'm gonna go ahead and add my mm, sugar first. I'm gonna add my sugar first. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle it over the plums and then I'm gonna go ahead and drop my water right over top of that sugar. Kind of to help start the dissolve process. And you can go ahead and pop this on the stove on low heat as it is, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some spices first, which will be cinnamon. And if you didn't know, Zimt in German is cinnamon in English. So word of the day, Zimt. Uh, that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and add about an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon directly into our compote. You don't have to do these flavors. I just like the fall flavor, so that's why I add it. I'm also gonna add a small pinch of nutmeg, probably a 16th of a teaspoon just to add a little bit more spice. And my compote's gonna be a little bit spicy and sour. If you want it a little bit sweeter, go ahead and add in another teaspoon or tablespoon of sugar if you want it more sweet. I just like mine sour and spicy. Once we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and pop this on low heat without the lid at first, but once it starts boiling, you're gonna go ahead and pop the lid on. Now that my plums are boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and pop my lid on, but we're gonna bask in this glory for just a second. And after about five or 10 minutes on the stove with the lid on, on medium heat, it'll start looking like this. So the plums will start to come apart and the flavors will really start to melt together. And I actually wanna show you a little bit closer. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my compote off the stove so you can see it. It's a little dark, but you know there's plums in there, so it's okay. And honestly, my plum compote is a little thin. It's not sticking to the spoon at all. And I think I'm gonna want it a little bit thicker, but this is the perfect time to taste test it to make sure all my flavors are how I like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. And honestly, the cinnamon and nutmeg flavor is perfect. It's still sour, which I really like, but if you wanna add more sugar, this is the time to do it. But I'm gonna go ahead and cook mine on low heat for probably another 10 to 15 minutes just to see if it will reduce halfway to kind of thicken up a little bit more. And I'm trying to be cool with this thingy and I'm not really cool, so we're just gonna go ahead and move on to our waffles. And to start our waffles, we'll obviously need some ingredients. So to begin, we're gonna need one egg and then we're also gonna need a little bit of lemon juice for our 185 grams or three fourths cup plus two tablespoons of milk. We're gonna go ahead and make our own buttermilk with our lemon juice, it's kind of cool. Um, it's a substitute if you don't have any buttermilk at home. We're gonna need 125 grams or three fourths cup plus two tablespoons of all purpose flour. It's the same weight or it's the same amount, sorry, volume as our milk. We're gonna need one teaspoon vanilla extract 56 grams or a fourth cup melted and cooled unsalted butter, a half teaspoon of baking soda. We're also gonna need a little bit of butter for oiling our waffle iron. Um, not very much, just a little bit, and it's gonna be melted. One tablespoon sugar, one teaspoon baking powder, and about a half teaspoon of salt. So let's get started. And to start on our waffles, first we need to make our substitute buttermilk. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our milk and also our lemon. And we want to get these juices flowing, so we're going to go ahead and roll it around underneath our hand first, and then grab our cutting board and knife, and then just chop the top of this lemon off. 
that's all we're going to need. We're just going to need the about a half teaspoon or three fourths of a teaspoon of lemon juice directly in our milk. And then we're going to go ahead and whisk this up so that way the milk and the lemon juice are actually combined. And I think I actually want a little bit more lemon juice, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And just so you know, we're not going to need the rest of the lemon, so you're going to have to find another home for it. But, I mean, make some lemon water. That's always good. <laughs> and then after we're done whisking our milk, we're going to go ahead and put it off to the side for a good 5 to 10 minutes, just so the curds start to curd start to curd. And while our milk is curding, we're going to go ahead and grab our flour and add our sugar, baking soda, baking powder, and also our salt. And we're going to whisk that all together. And that didn't take very long, so we're also just going to still wait about five minutes for our milk to curd. Or curdle. <laughs> yep, alright. With Kema Magic, it's been five minutes, so we're going to go ahead and dump our curdled milk directly into our flour mixture. We're also going to go ahead and add our vanilla extract and also our melted butter. Make sure you get all that melted butter goodness out of that bowl. And now we can go ahead and add our egg. Remember, we're gonna go ahead and crack this on the counter, our super bowl, never on our main bowl, so we don't get eggshell in there. And we're gonna go ahead and crack this fellow with confidence. And lovely. And now we're gonna go ahead and whisk this together until it's completely combined. And somehow my egg is still surviving in here. That's, that's impressive, but I'm gonna squish it. And then we're gonna go keep whisking until it's completely smooth, so no lumps, just like this. So it's all nice and smoothy and glossy. This is perfect waffle batter. And now that our waffle batter is ready, we can go ahead and grab our adorable, cute little waffle maker. I think this thing is adorable and it's brand new and I haven't used it yet and I'm excited to use it with you guys. Um, and this is so cool. It actually is not just a waffle maker, it also makes sandwiches. Isn't that cool? I'm going to eat so many girl peanut butter and jelly. And if you want to know how to do that, let me know. Let me know in the comments if you want to learn how to make girl peanut butter and jelly. But let's get back to these waffles. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in so he can start warming up. And I don't know where the switch is or where it tells me it's warming. And it's not warm yet, of course. Oh, there's a little thing on top. This little thing. Okay, this is red. It'll tell me when it's done. Okay. And while our waffle iron is warming up, we can go ahead and check on that plum compote. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that for you guys. And right now, I'm really happy with this. It's thickened up. It smells so good. I really like how this looks. And I wish you could smell it. It smells so good. It smells like fall. I'm happy. But we're going to go ahead and just put this off to the side and let it cool a little bit while we work on our waffles. And before we even start these waffles, we want to butter our waffle iron. Um, at least I want to butter my waffle iron so that way I don't get waffles stuck to it. I think I think that's a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a pastry brush and butter. Whoa, my butter, my butter's boiling. Whew, this waffle iron's hot. One thing about this waffle iron is I can't turn it down or up and I have no idea how hot it is. So we'll, we're going to play around with it. So I'm going to go ahead and just butter my whole waffle iron, make sure it's all buttered up. Perfect, this looks nice. And now while our waffle iron's buttered, we can go ahead and start on our first waffle. And I'm gonna tell you, I can never get my first pancake or my first waffle to work out. I, I heard it from everybody, the first one's always really hard, except for my sister, she says she can always do it on the first try. But I'm gonna go ahead and test this out because this is the first time using this waffle iron and should I clip this? I don't, I don't think I should clip this. Okay, and I'm gonna grab myself a plate and we're gonna go ahead and see this waffle. And it's been, oh, this waffle does not look nice. Okay, it's been about three or four minutes and this waffle is flimsy. Not a happy waffle. That's okay. I, I can eat this waffle and it will just be my little test waffle. That's it. Okay, let's try waffle number two. We're gonna go ahead and fill it up a little bit more. Perfect. Close the lid, let it bake for about five to six minutes and ooh, this one looks better still a little flimsy let's try it again waffle number three is our waffle I, I have a feeling we're gonna go ahead and fill up our waffle maker a little bit more we're also gonna let it cook for a little bit longer too and while while that guy cooks we're gonna go ahead and get this guy a napkin because he's still a little floppy yeah he's he's good but a little floppy not as crispy but let's go ahead and check on waffle number three I have a I have a feeling about this guy now this is a waffle 
and I went ahead and kept in my original reaction so you can hear how excited I was for it. Ooh, that looks like a waffle. Man, I'm excited about that guy. Okay. And I wasn't kidding. I was actually extremely excited for these waffles because they were going to be my lunch. But um, I still have one waffle left in the waffle iron, and as you can see, it's overflowed. So warning, don't overflow a waffle iron. It, it will spill out. But this waffle is really pretty. It's, it's crispy, and it's brown, and it's beautiful, and I'm happy with it. But this is still really hot, so I'm going to go ahead and put this just off to the side. And I'm going to go ahead and clean up my mess, too. Now let's go ahead and dress this beautiful stack of waffles up. Um, we're going to move the waffle iron to the side, go ahead and grab our plum compote, and just drizzle this plum compote right over top of these waffles. Oh, the smells, just everything about this I'm so excited for. But first, we have to take pictures. So. I'll be right back, which I thought maybe you guys would like to see, so I added them in here. But let's get back to why we're really here, and that's to eat these waffles. So I'm going to go ahead and cut myself up a slice, a slice of waffle, and then go ahead and add some plum compote right on top, and then just dig right in. And I'm super excited for this bite. And there's a reason why I'm excited. This is so good. The waffles have a slight crispiness to the outside, but they're soft in the middle. And the plum compote is really sour, and it has those nice, spicy flavors of the cinnamon and nutmeg. I think this, this beats all other lunches right now. I'm really happy with this. And you know what? I'm going to grab one more bite. And honestly, I think I'm just going to take this with me. Yeah, I'm just going to take this with me. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that because I found it delicious and I have nothing to show for it. It's all gone. All gone. However, I did take some pictures and I added them into the video. And if you guys like those, let me know because I can add them in my future videos. Um, I take pictures of all my bakes. Um, you can actually find those on Instagram too if you want. You can find my Instagram thing down below in the description. But I can also add them in my video, so just let me know if that's something you would like to see or not see. It's easy. Um, and yeah, oh, I love my new waffle iron. That thing's pretty cool. It did smoke a little bit at the beginning, but I read that it's normal for new waffle irons. I really hope it's normal because it smoked a little bit and freaked me out a little bit. But that's okay. We got waffles in the end. We ate some compote. It was all delicious. It was all amazing in the end. And yeah. If you guys like this video go ahead and hit the thumbs up button if you guys want to get more creative in the kitchen or learn some new sweet bakes go ahead and hit that subscribe button and oh new kids video my last kids video on monday next monday and we have a normal normal video a normal normal a normal regular video we have another one of these videos up next thursday too so if you guys want to check those out awesome be excited for them and that's it Go make those waffles, go make that compote, they're delicious, perfect for fall, I know it's not fall yet, but still, and yeah, that's it, so, ciao!